good evening everyone good evening everyone thank you for joining in uh, regarding the assignment i would just like to tell you all that uh, we'll be mailing you with all the links of all the sessions and uh, there will be an assignment submission link so on that you need to submit whichever assignment you were able to complete after which we'll be sending you your certificates and uh, all the materials Anushka, you can go ahead. Okay, ma'am. And can you uh, present the screen? Then uh, we shall start. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to ask you, is the screen visible to you? Mm, no, nothing is being shared. I'll try to, you know, reshare it. Just a second. Yeah. Until we have the screen ahead of us. Uh, thank you for joining in today, everyone. Um, I hope you're doing well. So just for a quick in, a quick check-in session, uh, like a question, I would like to ask how you're all doing, but with a twist. Um, how's your personal weather today is something that I wanted to ask. Cloudy, foggy, sunny breaks, rainy. How would you describe your personal weather status? For me, it has been a little cloudy and sunny because um, I wasn't feeling well, but then um, after the sun came, I felt well. So I took, yeah, sunny. Oh, amazing. Cloudy, sunny, brightly sunny. Cloudy. Great. Does anybody want to unmute and share? Cloudy and sunny. Great. Great. Anyone else? Cloudy and sunny, Mariam. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Gurbani. Do you want to say something? Foggy in the morning, sunny from later. That's the same for me because then the sun came out. And I went and took a nice sun, like walked in the sun for 15, 20 minutes, which really helped me. Foggy, I think it's reflecting the weather. Yeah, I think I, um, somewhere down the line, I think mood does get affected by weather. Okay, that's great. Um, now I'll ask another check-in question. Um, what's one new and interesting thing you've been thinking about lately? Like I've been thinking about cooking pasta from a long time. And I shall, I think I shall do that very soon. Gurbani, content writing, adopting a pet. Is it still low, Meena? Riding a bike. Wow. <laughs> now I'm thinking of eating pasta. <laughs> you may after the session. Even I shall after the session. <laughs> Anyone else? What is one new interesting thing you've been want wanting to do lately? Anything, guys? Meena, I, I think I'm audible. But then uh, maybe you can like leave the meeting and then again join back. Priya says, wanting to learn to drive, which I have been putting off. Oh, really nice. I resonate with you, Priya. Wanting to escape into the mountains, even though I'm from the hills. Oh, wow, that's me. Paint after yesterday's session. Yeah, yeah, Arti, I think we talked a lot about how to paint our emotions and, you know, uh, you now would have the color palette, the wheel of colors. So go ahead and paint something some, whenever you feel like. Learn calligraphy. Wow. 
calligraphy is so beautiful very satisfying also traveling alone somewhere in nature road trip to flamingos okay to watch flamingos want to give a talk on mental health at a bigger platform that's great natasha kosha uh, yeah go ahead you want to say something uh ma'am actually i have a doubt regarding the yesterday's activity so right. um uh so ma'am yesterday what uh, the art therapy session which we did now when we are uh, uh, you know connecting with the client and conducting a session for them sometimes uh, because of stressors or trauma and so on clients have this tendency to show their affect maybe through crying or uh Hmm. you know like so ma'am in uh, such cases if during uh, the painting session if their emotions are triggered and they start crying they start showing affect so what has to be uh, like our approach towards that as a therapist hmm. for me in therapy what i do if my client is venting out through crying i let them cry and i don't say things and i just give them that space to cry because i think um, it's a very important channel for them to have catharsis yeah so yeah. you don't you don't judge at that point of time you yeah. don't yes say anything you just let them you know cry and when that so, emotion yeah. that is what i will do okay so that is even during the painting session so if uh, suppose say a uh, they have chosen a blue color and uh, they are they are resonating it with sadness and if they start mm-hmm. crying while painting so in such situation also we have to allow them right yeah allow them to cry i think that's what we can do uh, and then maybe okay. you know take up the session after they feel a little yeah i help them accept their feelings accept their feelings if they feelings yeah okay. riya ma'am any uh, any suggestions Anushka uh, it's absolutely correct what you uh, just uh, expressed it's very important to let the clients feel what they are feeling because that's the first step towards wellness it has the first step towards acknowledging your feelings and then uh, venting out so after which of course uh, that can be dealt with maybe at a later stage rather than immediately addressing it let the client feel absorb the emotion and then proceed with it maybe in the subsequent sessions or once the client feels like talking about it okay okay ma'am thank you so much thank you kosha so um we had a nice quick check in with the weather and what you want to do um and so i guess we now are in the session now let's um Uh, and next slide please so yeah i think we did the welcome back and um and the last six sessions have been really great with you all thank you for being so participative and thank you for uh, trying out all the activities with us sharing it doing assignments thank you so much uh, today's last session is about self soothing as you can see on the uh, slide so does anybody have any idea about what self soothing is we have dealt upon it very briefly um, very briefly thank you mariam very briefly in the first session uh, not first second session um, does anybody want to share what they know about self soothing kosha go ahead i'm according to me it would be affirmations positive affirmations mantras uh, like making use of uh, it's mostly uh, do related to being compassionate towards ourselves and talking compassionately to us while we are experiencing those intense emotions right right very accurate uh, and i think we had one more hand raised up dr vinita verma i think 
yeah actually what kusha said just i wanted to say the same thing it's about like the positive self talk very compassionately mm-hmm. talking to ourselves the same thing right. i wanted to say right right very very accurate both uh, both the answers meena you want to say something yes ma'am talking very smoothly caringly lovingly having humanitarian very much empathetic in nature right right so self soothing even for self also and the person who is hearing to you right right absolutely correct uh, all of you all of your answers are very spot on i think they uh, match what we want to you know convey so self soothing may be a word we are acquainted with, with or kind of activities it's not just statements that you say to yourself but activities that you engage in which will help us relax and calm okay so um it can be a very great technique when we are feeling upset when feeling worried uh, is this is something that we can use so this is something that we touched upon while doing grounding techniques if you guys remember the three type of grounding techniques that we talked about mental physical and soothing so soothing techniques again are something that also combined with self soothing techniques and these are something that we touched upon very briefly in that session but we'll be talking about it in more detail in this session uh so next slide and so guys do you have a habit of talking to yourself if yes how do you talk what is the approach uh, share something some experience go ahead and unmute yourself and tell us or just write in the chat box your experience mercifully encourage myself forgive myself akshita ya go ahead akshita uh, <clears throat> yes ma'am i ta- i talk to myself like not most of the time but mostly when i like have all these negative thoughts or something i try to like at least not completely but at least i try to encourage myself so that i mean mostly in a positive way i try to think and uh, you know try to solve that problem in a positive way so that it would be helpful for me and also it will be like a motivation also it kind of refreshes yeah, my mind also because i think about both negative and positive uh, thoughts both together but mostly i concentrate on my positive thoughts so it kind of right. really helps me yeah that's that's a way uh, of self soothing right um and yeah go ahead yeah i mean like even i have a habit of talking to myself and it's more like you know when you are you are trying to try to encourage yourself and you know being self critical and trying to you know help yourself to understand where you are and what might help you as an you know and what might encourage you i mean i think that works right. a lot with me as an individual right i think that's that's totally what i also do um when we're nervous we're agitated um we don't think about you know we talk to ourselves to calm ourselves down i think this is what i do and um, it all means of soothing caring treating oneself with kindness during that self talk so yes. if you don't and you stress out if you don't talk and you stressed out it's something to think about you know despite the stigma and the social awkwardness of talking to uh, oneself loud and clear and everybody is able to hear but it's very good for your mental health particularly if you're trying to control emotions and uh, you know quiet your mind so yeah yeah and you want to say something no i was just saying that many people have shared their experiences in the chat um right they uh, do self talk okay like uh, i think someone yeah vargis has written yes usually i review the days events and try to see what i could have done better okay uh mariam has said that mm-hmm. mercifully encourage myself forgive myself right that's great madam dr aparna singh yes sometimes to encourage self to get rid of negative feelings mm-hmm. 
yes uh, alisha has said yes more like a friendly talking to encourage relax or calming myself right monjima when something goes wrong i talk to myself to calm me calm down me and also encourage me in a positive way sadhya has written for better understanding i talk with myself yeah i think introspection is also something that, that can occur better yeah with loud and clear self talk Meena mm-hmm. said, "Mostly friendly talking, feel relaxed, calm, and get motivated and energetic." Right. Uh, Ashwarya yeah. has written, "I talk to myself." Yeah, yeah, Natasha, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Somebody else was saying. Uh, so Ashwarya has written, "I talk to myself standing in front of a mirror. Usually, it's like I'm my my own best friend sometimes." That's okay. Great. Okay. Uh, I Janat Janatul Nishita has written. I say, how are you, Nishita? Please don't worry. Don't be sad. I'm always with you. That's a great way to, you know, um, self soothe yourself with talk. Encourages. Yeah. Yes. Akshita, you want to go on? Uh, ma'am, I have a doubt. Like, no. Sup- uh, there are like times where uh, even uh, self thought won't. Uh, Like really help because like the negative thoughts that we te- I mean uh, stress and because of overthinking there are times where self thought also really fails us to um, you know calm down. Uh, right. But what should we do at times, ma'am? There's one technique that we've talked about uh, in the self soothing, uh, regulating our emotions. Okay, so that's there. We'll tell tell you about it. It's basically talking about reappraisal. Okay. okay so maybe then you can have a better idea okay, okay. so i have I have so many responses which talk about you know having positive self talk our inner critic is the is generally the loudest when we are worried i think and unfortunately a pessimistic reviewer is something uninspiring and nobody wants a pessimistic re- reviewer of our own um, Yeah, yeah, Natasha, go ahead. Uh, so with me, I've uh, realized like lots of people uh, who do self-talk, they come and ask me whether it's awkward because sometimes it happens, uh, you know, not consciously. Right. You know, because there's so many thoughts running and what you're doing is actually analysis, which mm-hmm. I realize like most of us do while studying. You know, when we by heart, we look somewhere in the air and talk. Right. So if I'm reading or watching some video which is motivational, and I pick up something, or I want to add on to that, so that time I pause and I'm saying things out loudly, but which are not maybe self-talk. Yeah. And uh, usually it happens that it, I'm sometimes embarrassed, you know, because sometimes somebody walks to your room and they're like, "Who are you talking to?" I said, "No, I'm studying or I'm analyzing something." Right. Right. Or I'm writing a script or something, but I have to do it loudly because it's like I'm talking to myself to find answers. Right. To something that I've lost, and most of the time I'm seen I'm talking to somebody else, uh, like with, I'm asking them question, but while I'm asking, I'm sharing my thoughts and I find my answers. Right. And, so this loud talk or self talk i don't know but something is something works for me and one thing which i do which is a typical self talk is after i get ready and if i'm going for exam or like today i went did my first mental health talk in my own school wow. and so before going i was very nervous and i looked into the mirror i got dressed up purposely because even if your actions are not feeling that strong it's not working that mm-hmm. small small things of you know dressing up looking confident adds and then i looked right. into the mirror i winked at myself and said you're the best and you're going to rock and it's okay it's okay to screw up let's go and screw up let's see what happens but it went well that's great i'm <laughs> glad that it went well yeah but uh, what you said i think i resonate with that as well uh, even before small talks or even before the session i am nervous all these seven days i was nervous and i think i and and just talk to ourselves ki saying you know we can do it it's fine you know we'll we'll try to answer as much as we can with our knowledge so i think that mm-hmm. kind of self talks help us you know mm-hmm. <laughs> also the nervousness comes because you want to be perfect and not mess up so yeah. my way of motivating is let's go and mess up come on <laughs> so whatever happens is happens fine something right. like that right that's great 
thank you for sharing your experience yes. yeah in so, the chat we can see that uh, actually ashwarya has shared that sometimes uh, self talk just happens in head like and that that yeah, is something yeah. i think many of us can relate to like most of the time we are just talking to ourselves or maybe sometimes just talking to we feel that we have already conveyed a certain message to somebody but it's just in our mind if you're right right i think i i have also done the same ashwarya like self talking and what i have said right you think you've conveyed some things to the other person but it's all in your head and then you don't really know so i can i can resonate so what i was talking about is you know how our inner self is generally the loudest when you're worried and how we don't want a pessimistic reviewer of our thoughts right we don't want a pessimistic uh, view of how uninspiring things can get because of the pessimistic reviewer so it only makes you feel worse dis- discouraged and unsure of yourself so instead of friendly or a more empathetic calming is more re- is required i think and the voice of someone who adores you and is concerned about your well being we can through that we can challenge our uh, emotions acquire confidence and have the urge to try again when we f- feel safe and connected so i think the person who loves you and adores you to that point is we ourselves i think we have also talked about how self love can be a very self soothing um a very good self soothing technique where we talk to ourselves in a more calming and relaxed way as a lot of you have mentioned that uh, self soothing is so i think when we can talk to ourselves in that loving and that adoring tone i think we can challenge emotions have confidence and we can try again on things and feel more connected and safe we can cope and get through difficult situations um so next slide and so as i mentioned right your inner critic you don't want it to be a pessimistic reviewer and don't we want a friendly inner voice is something that we also talked about and through having a friendly voice we can cope and control our emotions better is something that i wanted to get through so now we'll see how um what what words can you say to yourself when you want to you know self soothe so things like i am sorry you're going through this um i'm here for you you can say that to yourself i know this is difficult uh time for you acknowledging it acknowledging the situation acknowledging the events that are going on because sometimes the stressors are external right we talked about this in the first session so just acknowledging that you know i know this is a difficult time for you and you're not alone i think uh nishita has mentioned you know don't be sad i'm always with you this is a great way to have a self talk soothing self talk next slide and yeah yeah natasha go ahead uh, so i just wanted to ask on the previous slide uh, you know uh, can you go back to the previous slide uh, so uh, yes i know this is difficult time for you or i'm sorry you're going through this and all this so sometimes like we had this discussion like few days back when somebody is going through something and the discussion about everybody says you know sympathy is bad you know but sometime do you think like this word sometimes says like you need sometimes a little bit of sympathy and is that okay or is it always bad i don't think again it's a very call it's a very subjective thing right for me i would like sympathy f- from myself but not from others uh i want to be yeah. i want to feel very less pressurized internally and it's okay if i don't get it externally or if it's there also it's fine so i think it, it also works on a very internal and external perspective do you want it externally or do you want it internally so sympathy mm-hmm. is again um it can be useful in those terms if we if you see through the perspective that we have um i think it it differs for everyone else but i might i might not say it's bad sympathy is bad through external means or just internal means it can be mm-hmm. different for en- everyone else so that's what i think about sympathy okay. and you want to add something 
I totally agree on what Anushka just you know mentioned, and it just depends on how you, as an individual or anybody as an individual, want to take it, wants it externally or you know wants it to come internally, because I think um, comfort is more you know very much subjective in nature, and you know we can't you know put it out that this is a you know a certain set pattern that has to be followed in terms of how people. will have to be comforted so i totally agree on that part yes priya you can go ahead the uh, discussion was on that see one part of sympathy which we say bad is some people just want uh, to share problems to gain sympathy and not change so they are on the page since long time but mm -hmm. sometimes you know sympathy i at some point i say if it's the first time somebody is hurt everybody is like we don't care it's a big problem for them but not for everybody else mm -hmm. and just to show that i understand that there's a problem and acknowledge it and i understand how big it is for you might not be for others is also sometimes taken as sympathy and crush but sometimes i feel that is necessary on that lines yeah so these were somewhere i feel helpful you know when you what you have written i know this is a difficult time for you in the many cases like somebody shares a problem and it's not difficult for somebody else somebody but they else. so badly want to hear that it might be not for you but this is a big deal to me please understand right right, yeah. right. i think that is more in terms of drawing a thin line between how you are sympathizing or empathizing with somebody yeah right hmm. so i mean and that's, that's what right. somebody needs acknowledging i yeah, think acknowledging, acknowledging that yeah. is more important rather than uh, justifying everything justifying their problem then becomes a mm -hmm. another issue so mm -hmm. i think acknowledging their problem is better rather than justifying uh, whatever happened was wrong is justifying but then acknowledging i understand that this was a very tough time for you yeah so i think that's where the difference lies as i mentioned thank you uh priya you can go ahead and elakshita maybe you you can ask priya you want to say something you're not audible Okay, Akshita. Until I think Priya joins back. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, but uh, sometimes you know, uh, at times of you know where I feel really stressed and want to like comfort myself, I think I would like mostly prefer uh, my the strong self of me to just come out of me and you know like meet eye to eye contact then. you know uh, assure me that i'm completely fine it's really going to be okay i kind of sometimes feel that if if we were grant, if i were granted a wish i would definitely use the you know the strong wish. side of me to literally come out of my body i know it sounds funny but uh, i really want uh, my strong self to comfort me not me talking to myself mostly but like that in that form I in a more comforting sense in a more external yes. externally out there you yes. trying to yeah i understand i understand yeah but can you I hear me now yeah yeah priya you are audible go ahead go ahead uh, what i was able to connect when we were discussing about this is i connect to this uh, saying where Uh, at times, I am my own worst enemy. So it's about uh, accepting when you start accepting that what you have uh, done is not right, or you know more of that. When that acceptance is there, I guess that's kind of the forgiving. When that starts to happen, a lot of difference does take place. Right. I uh, I think that's totally correct because when you have acceptance of things, first we need to create an awareness of things, and then. maybe acceptance of that awareness it may be hurtful it may be not but then acceptance is important that's why um you know these statements like i know this is a difficult time for you accepts that you know it's a difficult time for me and i i'm going to get through this or i am here for you things like that uh including that in your self soothing talk could be very helpful accepting statements of what is externally happening uh you can't take or steer the course of that but then 
you know that this is a difficult time and you can get through this is something that you can talk to yourself about so i understand where that's coming from priya thank you for sharing that so uh yeah next slide so these are another few statements you know i believe in you it's okay to feel this way it makes sense to me i can understand you can count on me so you know things like that things statements like these could be very helpful and they could be a very comforting uh, set of words that you say to yourself so these are some things that you can practice on a daily basis in terms of self talk and if doesn't if this doesn't work there are so many other ways that we learned right and there is another um, way that we're going to talk about right now so next slide on okay before we start i would like to know um some people would have had done self talk and self soothing self talk um in your life or do it regularly some of us wouldn't have so i would like to know in the chat box or just after unmuting yourself just uh, one statement one self soothing statement that you would like to say to yourself today in the chat box or you can just unmute and say yourself and tell us yeah natasha go ahead so the one sentence uh, that works brilliant for me which i learned is you know uh, somebody who is going to be with me lifelong is me so i have decided to fall in love with her oh that's, that's great keep, that keeps me going wow that's a beautiful statement thank you we have more beautiful statements here um all is well um grishma has written i'm proud of me monjima has written it's okay priya has written be nice to yourself everything alish has written everything is going to be fine hemlata has written you're doing your best uh, akshata same natasha ma'am yeah kosha has written this too shall pass kiran has written you can do it dola has written when i have to do any work i do self talk saying i can do it great jaslin kaur this too will pass trust yourself shubhra i can and i will cross this successfully mariam i'm here with you ashwar it's okay when I, wherever it is it's okay you're strong and even if you feel low you're going to come back stronger in a while great great line akshita uh shishti hey i'm sorry for disturbing session but i need to ask do we need to submit the compulsory assignment via mail yeah you will get a link shishti don't worry um if not very soon we'll be trying our best to you know send you mails as soon as possible pallavi it's okay we will definitely work it out together great sadhya you can go on that's great priya your hand is raised do you want to say something yeah i i was thinking about uh, the best thing would be is telling yourself that you deserve to be treated and treat yourself right right that's a great that's a great way to you know you know talk about how what i would like as well as i doing what i like so that's great because always it tends to be that family comes first and you do things for others and uh, i mean particularly yeah. for me it's about i put my needs last so in that mm-hmm. way uh, even giving myself a little treat maybe a hot cup of coffee or a dessert or whatever it is even that makes a big difference at making myself feel i am special as well right right that's great that's a great way to you know see how you can help yourself grow as well so that's a great statement for you to tell yourself and you know it's a it's a great way uh superna sen this will to pass exactly nishita be humanitative be yours we will definitely do good god will help you promise great satya 
it's okay you can do it just believe in yourself vrinda it will be okay and then i do something to soothe myself okay that's great dr apanna it's okay i am to do anything god will definitely think for something for me as well i think that's what you meant right okay that's great just a second guys i think my net is yeah guys i hope there's no sound anymore okay thanks for the nod arti thank you prakash okay so we talked about you know self soothing talk as a technique but then let's see self soothing technique for emotional regulation is something i think akshita also mentioned about emotional regulation and how it could be helpful so let's see about that as well next slide and so how do you generally regulate your emotions is something i wanted to ask because i know you guys you guys are very aware of things and so and you're also very participatory so i would like to know how do you regulate your emotions is there a way through which you would like to like um regulating your emotions i journal and i write notes that helps me so what helps you regulate emotions kasha go ahead ma'am so for me it is exercise and uh, journaling but uh, i right. also uh, i'm also very mindful in terms of uh, what i'm experiencing and i try to right. detect Uh, the emotion in my body at the same time so right. so if suppose there is some trigger happening and when i come to know i start breathing i start uh, contracting those muscles and relaxing it so it's like a half emr which i try works for me that's great that's a very integrative method of a lot of small small yeah. techniques i think and if it's working for you then that's amazing so a lot of people have read anything else sosha you want to say something no okay um life's all about ups and downs all things are going low okay then they'll definitely go up too yeah mariam okay breathing walking in nature aarti root uh, i talk to my krishna okay um akshita has written listening to music uh, varghis has written usually a couple of push ups when i feel like i'm getting agitated yeah moving yourself is great um why if you feel like you're anxious or getting agitated uh, kiran reading music nice pen down a musing or something or write something like a letter to myself yeah writing is something i also do dr apana listening to music yeah so i have gained an understanding of how you regulate your emotions and what we're going to do gardening yeah yeah that's a very great way to regulate your emotions and just engaging yourself in that activity is great breathe breath, breathe work self talk and being in conscious mode mm. so today we talking about self soothing technique for emotional regulation you know there's music there's art there's uh, exercise there's a lot of things yeah natasha go ahead 
so for me uh, this emotional triggers what you're saying right so one is the long time work like you're sad and you have time to work on it like meditate this that mm-hmm. has work okay. but the immediate right. triggers like anger so okay. uh, you know uh, i used to initially just you know bombard relax or just say it out and relax or cry or relax or something like that now it's like since i've got into this i started working more on myself so uh, i have kept it like a cue point so anger i will go like 15 minutes start walking or go around and might change or any emotional moods where uh, i started doing activities where i have to uh, replace those negative thoughts with something else so listening music mm-hmm. uh, though it changes my mood it it is okay for a long term emotional health like meditation but immediately it did not help because while listening music i'm so angry that i'm still having those thoughts bombarded right but playing right. music does a difference okay so something like that where or solving a sudoku suppose immediately which compulsory makes me think about that particular thing to solve and then get out right very immediate things uh, help you to get out those immediate um, emotional uh, stressors but there are long term uh, things that you can do also mm, great so music helps you in a very long term basis but then you know playing sudoku or something so i'm feeling dull if i listen to a good music and start walking it helps me refresh right but if i'm upset or it's when a mind is out of control whenever we are extremely like depressed or upset the extreme emotions right, right. so that in this is not working talking listening because you're not in that sense to grasp anything right. so some by some activity which is just meant for me which compulsory puts my uh, where my mm-hmm. it's putting into actions right. you know that works for me right so i think uh, sudoku is something i also play uh, to help me ground myself because you cannot think of something else and do sudoku yeah. <laughs> to think of the numbers yeah, and the yeah. clock is ticking or something like that okay. but you can think of something else and cook because that becomes mechanical for us right that does not work like that okay thank you for sharing natasha kosha go ahead you want to say something Yes yeah, so ma'am I just forgot to mention this but uh, I have tried emotional mm-hmm. freedom technique EFT and uh, mm-hmm. I don't know whether uh, it works for others but uh, it did work for me so mm-hmm. it was during uh, an anxious moment which I tried and uh, yeah it did help me to calm down my own self that's great maybe th- th- that's something that I can also read upon a lot uh, more because I'm not very um you know explore i i haven't explored in that part so maybe i'll read upon that thank you kosha for suggesting okay, welcome so yeah we talked about you know how uh, there are a lot of different emotional regulation techniques that works for each one of us and that might be also different for in terms of self soothing technique this might or this might not be the thing for everyone right so and we when we talk about threats or any rewards uh, we communicate through emotions uh, because emotions have the cap- capability to steer appropriate action um, just like a compass does right so it can steer us towards a goal or a or any kind of you know emotion uh, based on the um, based on the threats and rewards that we are faced with basically the stressors so when a when a youngster makes a mistake for example they might get afraid and lie to their parents about it right or they may avoid facing them uh, for the fear of punishment the parents may find out what they did eventually and the youngster will certainly face the repercussions for that right that they were trying to attempt to escape in this case a child's attempt um attempts to listen to and respond to the fear feeling were useless so in this in this context where you trying to escape it and the response to the fear was escape it was very useless because at the end of the day he had to face it however someone being haunted by a dangerous animal in the forest would benefit from the same emotion so fear um works differently in different scenarios fear here made the child escape but he has to come back home to face the repercussions but when you're 
in fear and facing a dangerous animal like a tiger in the forest it's different your parasympathetic nervous activates and then you run you run you fight flight or you know um fight flight so you either run you either just stay there and get in, eaten up by the tiger but here mostly what we do is run right in such a scenario it would have been prudent to flee rather than engage the engage with the ferocious beast that the tiger is it's necessary to know when to trust as i've written here you can all read that it's necessary to know when to trust emotional triggers and act on them and when not to in other words we need to know how to regulate or manage our emotions so that we can make the most out of them okay so in this session we'll go over the basics of emotional reg regulation psychology including what is and how to grow it basically and what tools can we use um, you know in emotional management in real life so there is person um, gross and uh, he was a psychologist uh, and very famous in 1998 and he referred to emotional regulation as a process by which individuals influence which emotions they have when they have them and how they experience and express the, their feelings so they can these emotional regulations can be automatic controlled conscious unconscious anything and may have effects at one or more points in the emotions producing process so as we talked about you know emotional regulation and how it's different for everyone else so this process as gross has also mentioned is um how we influence this emotional regulation each emotional regulation pattern for each indiv individual is different okay so for me it might be different for you it might be different and it can be automatic it can be controlled it can be conscious or unconscious okay and may have effects at one or more points of time in the emotional production process basically so what is emotional regulation it is a modulator okay assisting us in filtering the most important bits of information and motivating us to pay attention to it in a way that does not cause us worry or anxiety so helps us regulate our emotions basically so that we do not worry or we have anxiety so there are various self soothing techniques so if one of the self soothing technique is self talk that we discussed upon a little more briefly but there are many other ways okay of self soothing so next slide and so mm, uh, yeah thanks sir so um consider personal favorites so for example it could be a favorite movie your color favorite color favorite location favorite animal favorite person favorite season favorite music anything but just engage with your current personal favorite so for example if you're not feeling fine you can just engage with your uh, favorite movie for me it's ye jawani diwani so i just watch ye jawani diwani when i feel a little stressed and i want to just have some time for myself so consider your personal favorites it could be movie color so like paint your emotions is something that you can do with your favorite soothing colors uh, and it'll help you calm down friends series works every damn time right i think uh, friends brooklyn 99 is something that i watch a lot um when i feel like it's not a great day or something i'm getting too bored or something i watch friends or brooklyn 99 so your favorite movie as a uh, season you know music anything that works that's very favorite to you you can uh, work on that so don't be monotonous every time you're feeling um, anxious or you know anything you just watch that one movie it will become very um, how would i say it will become like it won't work so one time you can watch a movie the other time you can listen to a music or the other, third time you can just uh, go for a walk to your favorite park or something or you know um, just meet with the um meet some person that you genuinely genuinely like okay so change it every time change your personal favorites every time okay then regulating hug 
So there's a self-regulating hug that you can do is um, place your, so if you can have your videos on, um, we'll practice it right now. I'm unable to see a lot of you, but it'll be nice if I can. So what you do is place your right hand across your heart and your palm against your torso and hand under your armpit to give yourself a self-regulating hug. Basically like this. I'm not sure if you can see me, but yeah, but just give yourself a self-regulating hug. So like a torso is your and yeah so your Mommy, hand goes under your armpit not on your torso what's not on i think it's on for uh, Ma, others your video on others can see me no it's not on for you guys no oh, people oh, can oh, see oh, me your video is visible yeah able to see you yeah. it's on it's on Great. So try and hug yourself like this and try to hold it on for 10 seconds at least. Okay, just self-regulating hug where you're making yourself feel warm. Just and just like close your eyes if you mm -hmm. feel like, but just 10 seconds, okay? Okay, Kosha. So. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, not nice <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Is it possible to show the previous two slides? I missed out on it. No, yeah, yeah, sure. We'll show you. Thank you. And um, yeah, so it's until cool. uh, until uh, yeah, we show the slides. How was your experience of hugging yourself? Yeah, Natasha, you were saying something. I said I couldn't reach my torso. I think I'm big. <laughs> so it just made me more and more realize you can't even hug yourself. Please reduce some weight. It's okay. <laughs> I, I don't think like okay. Yeah. I think it's fine if you are okay to hug yourself like this also. Thoda sa. Yeah. It's fine. Because even I can't reach my torso. <laughs> Anybody else who wants to share their experience of the self-regulating hug? I don't think we take time to hug ourselves. It was actually very nice to uh, hug. Uh, I, I never thought about it. So it's always like I reach out to my kids or somebody, you know. Right, hug. right. It's always nice that you can do it yourself. So feeling very self-sufficient in that way. Right. Kosha, um, am I visible now? And you are on unmute. Do you want to say something? No. Okay. So basically, that's how you do a self-regulating hug. And there are uh, uh, there are various ways of hugging ourselves. So there's like one of them is I think relaxing self hug, and one of them is like a cozy warm blanket hug. So there are a lot of hugs that you can do in self soothing technique. But one of them is a self-regulating hug. Okay. Felt secure and safe. Nice. That's great. So we don't usually take time for ourselves and hug ourselves. I think we don't really do that. We do that to others and we would like to hug others. But I'm a I'm an awkward hugger for others. Like I'm socially not a hugging person. So when I hug myself, I feel nice. Because I do people generally do like hugs. And I would like to get it. So I just hug myself. That helps me a lot. Feeling positive, feeling assured. I've got small hands. Yeah, Aisharya. I think my hands are also very small. I resonate. <laughs> and feeling positive. Exactly feeling self-sufficient. Yeah. Felt fe fel secure and safe. Great, great, guys. Um, uh, uh, next to next slide, Anne. The one that we were doing. Kosha, yeah, go ahead. So, man, I just have a question. Right. I mean, not like, to this not completely but uh, ma'am how can we differentiate between intuition and our emotional uh, Kosha, I... your voice 
i yeah. got like intuition but your voice is breaking yeah okay now am i audible yeah you are audible oh. yeah so ma'am what it's is like can we detect difference between you can write it in the chat box am i uh, kosha difference between intuition and then yeah emotional trigger now you are audible how can we detect it like yeah emotional trigger so emotional trigger will um will uh, create a chaos in your uh, homeostasis so basically you not able to okay. do anything okay not a able to so emotional triggers might disrupt yeah disrupt is a word your emotional status your daily functioning well intuition guide you and they are more of a guiding force of an emotion in your life so i think that is a basic difference but if i have to put it in other words maybe and do you want to do you have a more proper way to put it namaskar i i kind of lost my connection in between so i'm just trying to make sense of what kosha had asked you so kosha is asking difference between intuition and emotional <laughs> trigger and can you just repeat what you had said also like i'm really sorry yeah. I'm so i just said you know emotional triggers disrupt our homeostasis they disbalance our functioning basically and uh, while intuitions are more of a guiding emotions and that's your unconscious telling you to maybe not do something okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh it's not very conscious to us we are not able to understand where it's tracing back intuitions when i was reading about intuitions was something like you know how it could be your unconscious responding you to say that this is something that's not my that might not work for me or something like that so you can't really trace back but then sometimes you are able to but then it's not very similar to what emotional triggers are emotional triggers might trigger your emotions to a heightened perspective and then you know they disrupt your homeostasis and disbalance your function yeah and i think uh, emotional triggers are more in sense of some distress that is you know that is being caused in you right and when we see uh, in, in intuition and in more a sense it's more like you know immediate insight or a perception you know that we see or that we are you know trying to make sense of so i think like that can be a basic difference that we can see in terms of intuition and you know emotional triggers i mean i think i'm making sense kosha like because emotional triggers are more in sense of you know distress that can be caused in in your perception or you know that can actually oh, okay. cause distress yeah. to you but when it comes to in, uh, intuitions mm -hmm. it's more in terms of the perception that you're trying to place and you know the immediate insight that you are trying to gain more in terms of you know which might contrast your conscious reasoning or intuitions always kind of contrast okay, our so conscious no. reasoning and reflections mm -hmm. um, am i audible yeah yeah you're audible kosha uh, your voice is breaking again so it is positive you mean to say okay so you say it's more of positive what right. is positive right yeah 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 you are audible but can you just receive, uh, repeat what you were saying so i'm kosha in... maybe uh, your voice is breaking a lot maybe what we can do is um yeah i don't know if i'm audible but what we can do is we can take up the set, like question and answer as soon as the ppt is done okay yeah I, i'll just write it down better yeah till then you can write it down 
and uh, uh, until then i think we'll be done with the ppt as well in the session so we can have a q and a short q and a at the end okay okay guys so we did the self regulating hug and uh, so what you can do is wrap yourself the third thing that you can do is it's it's a winter time right now and what we can do right now is maybe like wrap yourself in a blanket or like a cozy cozy blanket and just rock back and forth like a rocking chair so that that has something that has been working for me so before we made this list we tried all of this okay so i can tell you that this works okay wrapping yourself and rocking back back and forth we i and and both tried it uh, try doing it in a more you know like a safer space <laughs> and don't fall off the bed that's the only thing like we did so just uh, take care of that and the fourth thing that you can do is make yourself a soothing playlist okay so th- so whenever there is a song that you're listening to and you think oh this is a very soothing song this is calm me down a lot just add it to your uh, playlist okay make a one hour playlist for yourself which helps you soothe yourself okay songs that um, generally connect to you a lot and you can connect to them okay so that's yeah it yeah we wrapped ourselves and we did a rocking chair ashwarya very similar but you can get hurt so maybe ashwarya we can try ashwarya's way just wrap wrapping yourself and you know rolling in the bed um say a coping statement is also something that we can do the self soothing uh, talk that we talked about right that is something that you can integrate in your everyday life like one self soothing statement that you can say i can do it i will be able to do it okay um take a warm shower if warm shower is something that you like otherwise you can take a cold shower if cold is something that you like that's totally fine but just uh, spend your uh, spend some time with yourself okay and go out in a warm sun uh, for 15 30 minutes just have a walk and being by yourself and just if you like going out for a walk on a sunny day then that's fine if if you like cloudy weather like i cl- like cloudy weather so i like going on walks or drives on a cloudy weather so that's my way of self soothing making yourself a drink so it can be hot chocolate it can be coffee it can be soda juice even water just getting yourself to drink some water okay so it can be anything slowly sip a sip your beverage and paying attention to the to the flavor smell temperature texture and the sensation could be very helpful okay so when you're drinking hot chocolate next time try paying attention to how how slow you can go however slow you can go just go that slow and then you know feel everything the flavor smell texture sensations okay so yeah these are some of the techniques that you can do there are more you know just having a, a light scented candle if you are very prone to smells or if smells calm you down have that in your room burn essential oils again if that's something that um, you know soothes you smells uh, soothes you so have that in your room okay like what i do is apply a cool wash cloth um, like cool wash cloth to my face and add lavender essential oils for a calming boost lavender helps me a lot yeah mood lamps also help uh, i think someone raised their hand me 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 yeah just go ahead i wanted to ask you uh, all these techniques like you know these are self for a uh, self soothing right yeah. but sometimes they do not give the effect of if we had an external thing like a hug from a friend or i usually spend whenever i'm upset i just find some child and i go i get relieved like this so a self hug might never be that 
com- comforted uh, comforting to me as i get a hug from a friend or a baby right. or a puppy maybe so in that case uh, what do you do because for extroverts and introverts like we always have this discussion introverts are always whenever they are low they want to be do everything by themselves to calm mm-hmm. down they gain energy mm-hmm. by being by themselves extrovert like me i am a public person the more i go out talk to people hang out with friends or get a hug from a friend might soothe me immediately right so when if it's not available no other choice but it does not work sometime so or is it anything else that we can do so self soothing in itself is a very self sufficient technique like we talk about how to just help our own self deal with things we are not focusing on the external then because we're dealing with self soothing techniques but if you know what can soothe you like talking to someone else which is great awareness which is great insight for you so i think you can use that to help yourself uh, you know soothe and uh, maybe create a list of what works for you what keeps your mind off like you know you told me um talking to a friend going at going out and hanging out with a child uh, yeah hugging so, a baby so, yeah, yeah. so maybe focus on that a, a little more and just write down what works for you okay when you are engaging with the environment and that's soothing you if that is something that works for you it's okay. it's okay if uh, you know self soothing techniques are something that don't work for everyone else so it's fine uh, you can find your own ways to soothe yourself things that work for you become your own soothing technique so that's okay yeah so uh, that's pretty much what self soothing techniques that we talked about um there's one more thing and next slide what you can do is this is a very cbt dbt approach and uh, it helps in encouraging more acceptance and flexibility is cognitive cognitive reappraisal there are a lot of um, more detailed uh explanation to this but it's just as simple as you know you're telling yourself a very negative statement and then you replace it with a more um uh different angle not i would say not positive but in, from a different angle which helps you calm down because not everything positive can help you calm down right so but just changing the situation just changing the statement a little bit tweaking it a little bit might help you okay so uh, replacement or situational role reversal are examples of cognitive reappraisal abilities yeah changing reframing our perspective correct so we have an example here anybody who wants to talk about cognitive reappraisal any any have you ever tried to reappraise your thoughts change your perspective so we we basically see a difficult situation from a different angle so for example here um just to uh, run our minds i have given example here and you can maybe tell me a replacement thought for that okay and next slide so for example replace ideas like uh, my boss despises me i am no longer required here so with an alternative like so you guys can tell me an alternative maybe just think about what angle could be good enough if you are the person who has this thought my boss despises me i'm no longer required here ya yeah, zumana thinking ma'am uh, we can think like uh, i deserve some better place some better opportunities waiting for me yeah yeah for example here in this situation you can think about that they don't deserve me okay whatever works for you so there's no like right or wrong way of appraising thoughts whatever you know just helps you see things in a different angle and helps you calm down sidra you want to say something yes ma'am so i feel like the first uh, thing that i would like to do in a situation like this is try to understand what evidence do i have to support my statement 
So say for instance, mm-hmm. if I'm saying that my boss despises me and that I am not required in the organization, then maybe I would like to consider what am I offering to the organization? And am yes. I being valued for what I am giving to the organization? If the answer is a yes or no, and then maybe proceed from there on, like do like a backward channel kind of a, a thinking, like engage in a process, a thinking process like that. Right. So that's a great way to logically question uh, your perspective. Like how that's we a- engage in Socratic thinking. So it could be Socratic something like thinking, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. So Socratic questioning is again a very CBT. This is something that I use a lot in my CBT sessions. Yeah, Natasha, go ahead. Uh, okay, so uh, in this case, I would frame it like so. If my boss despises me, I won't uh, change my statement or thought process from I am no longer required here to uh, you know he expects more from me, so I can do much better. Right. I'm okay capable of doing more, much better. Or usually happens with me with this cognitive theory. I've worked with friends, like you know, uh, I called a friend and uh, she did not call me back immediately. That means she doesn't like me or she's ignoring me. This statement right. can be changed into maybe she's busy. She might call me later. Right, right. So that building up of thoughts of accusing and coming to some negative conclusion goes away. Right. even i thought of something on the same lines you know i just thought of i know i'm hard working and honest let's let's give it another shot or something like that so yeah yeah very on this on the same lines yeah yeah akshita go ahead you want to say something yes ma'am uh, i would ra- like to replace this phrase my boss despises me instead of that i tend think that maybe he, like uh, natasha ma'am told he maybe he wants some some more effort from me or might be he wants to like correct my mistakes so that i don't do that in future certain so thing or right. like that All right exactly so basically what we are doing here is changing our perspective yeah kosha yeah uh, zumana maybe, next uh, the yeah, boss yeah. is not so ma'am maybe the not in a very good mood or has some Uh, Ex- maybe yeah. that is being projected or mm-hmm. so that that's how maybe you're giving an alternative where you think maybe the boss is having yeah. some other issue when he's no projecting if there are right yeah yeah but yeah. if there is no that's one way to do it if i have evidence mm. then yeah then that's something else right then that becomes a fact um yeah zumana you wanted to say something hello yeah 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 go ahead uh, actually uh, one day i was having a personal session with one of my client she told me uh, she was looking her really down that day so i asked her what's wrong with her she told me that when she was stepping out of her office at the market place she saw her best friend crossing uh, from this Opposite road. So she said that right. my best friend ignored me. She didn't look at me, and uh, she just ignored me and walked away. I told her, "Did you ask her? Did you try to ask her what was the problem? Why did she ignore you?" So she said, "No. After marriage, she has got some attitude, some ego problem, and she is like that." I told her that you should once message her and ask her what's wrong with. Her. What was wrong? Uh, tell her that I looked to you at the marketplace. You are looking great, and message or something like that. So she was uh, convinced for this thing, and she finally messaged uh, her best friend. Uh, the reply she got was really shocking. Her best friend said that thank you so much for messaging me. I was really needing a great friend in me, because I'm facing some problems in my marriage life. And if I hadn't thought, um, seen you, if I saw you, I would have come and straight hugged you tight. Because I was really missing someone close to me, mm-hmm. so the problem solved at that time only. But if she wouldn't have messaged her, the misunderstanding has gone so far. Mm-hmm. So right. wasting your words sometimes is really uh, very helpful in saving your relationships. Right, just having a little different perspective and maybe not thinking everything as a fact. Taking everything as a fact could be helpful. Yeah. Right. Great. Thank you for sharing your experience. 
um so, so that's basically what we wanted to talk about today you know self soothing self soothing talk self soothing techniques and cognitive reappraisal for helping you regulate your emotions so yeah natasha go ahead uh so this thing that we are talking about evidence for a statements right uh so sometimes suppose you get an evidence like i come and tell you that you know i i don't want to talk to you or you come and tell me that i don't want to talk to you because i think so and so so it doesn't uh, become my uh, my thinking pattern like i i think you she doesn't like me because of something instead you give me that evidence but still i'm supposed to change the way i think right so even if i have the evidence of exactly what's happened the yes my boss said it up front to me that the boss despises me right. you know but then what i am left with that self judgments which means that's the only thing in my hand so it's not about finding evidence but uh, the statement that followed is like okay he despises me or doesn't mean i'm not good enough maybe right. he is intimidated by me or something to replace my negative statements about me into positive and to keep going right so maybe yes he might despise me but i can work hard and prove myself yeah i'm strong yeah. enough to do with that yeah. something yeah something on the on those lines could be very helpful so even if it's a fact and thank you for you know asking this question because yes yeah, sometimes it's it's a fact and but then it's so external that we can't really change the fact but then what we can do is change our perspective we still have a pers- perspective to you know change so may we have a little different outlook towards that and a broader understanding so we can definitely do that so uh, for the homework what we need you to do is uh, for this particular session what we need you to do is maintain a five day um, table uh, yeah facts should be accepted and we can change the way so just five day table where you have two columns that's it one side you will have uh, your um, negative reappraisals and you will try to change it to positive reappraisals so after doing that for five days uh, you just have to write your short experience of how it made you feel and how it felt basically to you know um, do that or otherwise we also have another um, you know um like a another assignment that you can do is uh shoot a video or just click your picture self hugging and post it on your social media handle or whatever or just uh, send it us to the you know the assignment link that we give you and just have a 10 second hug for yourself just hug yourself out or someone else if again if some if that something that does not that does not work for you you can do it uh, to someone else just hug someone or yourself okay that you are very comfortable with and will help you soothe so a photo or a video tag us on uh, from our page and yeah so just hashtag self soothe is something that you can follow okay so two things that you can do is one thing is a table and write your experience of the table we don't don't need that table that's something for your own reference so for 5 days you need to do this and write your experience and otherwise uh, click a photo or take a video post it on your social medias and tag us okay that's pretty much for today and for the sessions and you want to say something yeah definitely um first of all i would like to apologize for today like i had a lot of internet issues so i kind of missed a lot of in between but i would like to thank all of you for you know being in this 7 days with us it was a wonderful insightful journey for us as well i hope i'm visible too yeah so i it was a wonderful insightful journey for us as well i mean there were a lot of perspectives that were open to us i mean right. on like in each exercise we were able to you know learn something new from every one of you a new perspective or a new way to understand certain things and we hope we meet again for you know 
other workshops and you know and also we have a support group you might be receiving a mail regarding that as well within the mails you'll receive for the assignments all these assignments together will be you know once again shared with you and that time we'll there would be a you know a message for the support group also would be shared with you every one of you so if anybody wants to join we we would love if you will join the support group with us that would be really interesting to you know right come into a close group and you know understand more in depth and gain more insights of you know stress regarding and stress, stress yeah. and how to manage stress and we can work as a small group and you know understand how we can work for each other and stand out yeah. for each other and work understand and learn from each other right Thank so you thank you everyone support yeah. groups are open guys you can register we'll let you know about the information through mail don't worry regarding assignments your time to submit assignments they'll be given um, you know with due time so don't worry about that and thank you so much for joining everyone thank you so much for all these days that we spent together it was so insightful for me i have question things and i have tried to gain perspective on a lot of things thank you so much thank you take care bye 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 thank you, you. Uh, ma'am i have a doubt yes, yes. yeah ma'am like most of the time when you are counseling your uh, um, i mean your counseling mm-hmm. uh, the person uh, ma'am suppose uh, the counselor himself or herself has uh, drawn through the same trauma or stress uh, that client has drawn through uh, and but wouldn't that i mean uh, for the counselor also wouldn't that affect as much as your judgment uh, yes ma'am the i mean the trauma or whatever the client has drawn through and also the counselor uh, they both uh, drawn through the same trauma would that affect the counselor also while giving the solutions for that yeah so there's a tra- there's a thing called transference and counter that does yeah counter transference that does occur sometimes we have to keep ourselves in check during the counseling sessions so before the sessions is i make myself a blank slate that's what i try to do take 15 minutes of time just uh, uh, removing thoughts and trying to calm myself down recognizing biases and what could be something that is common in both of our parts and just being awareness just having an awareness and accepting that this might be something that you know uh, has a potential way of hindering my thoughts during the session uh, is more than enough so counter transference can be dealt with that you know just having understanding of our biases having understanding of our similarities and the shared trauma that we have so yeah. you can feel empathy but yeah you have to draw that boundary because you don't want to become that uh, their problem right yeah. they are not with their problem you don't want to yeah yeah sorry yeah, ahead, for cutting you off uh, and mm-hmm. also not self disclosing so much with the client i mean there is we we, we kind of use self disclosure as one of our techniques to work with the client but not is closing so much so that you for you tend to fall into the process of transference and counter transference so keeping that also in check might help okay ma'am and also uh, sorry another question uh, i was i read this uh, webtoon where uh, it was mm-hmm. uh, the same town it was related to psychology so mm-hmm. here uh, the counselor uh, his patient he was unable to you know get the patient out of the trauma and she commits suicide suicide but the counselor he gets completely you know the uh, he blames himself for the reason uh, that he couldn't uh, bring her out of the trauma or something mm-hmm. it it really affects the counselor also ma'am i think because he failed to you know bring uh, the client out of the stress how do uh, generally counselors you know they get rid of, i mean they come out of this uh, situation so it's not necessary akshita that um, a counselor will be able to get you through your situation okay. sometimes it does not work out 
in the therapeutic relationship that's fine uh, the counselor recognizes it either it, he recognizes he or she recognizes it um, you know refers to you another counselor that is an approach that could be done but then it's not necessary that there's a pure short solution to everything in therapy okay that everything just becomes zero after going to therapy everything will get solved because a lot of efforts comes from within you as well there's a 50 50 relationship mm-hmm. yes. and uh, of the counselor and the therapist so but yeah i think when uh, your client goes through something as severe as that you know i think it might affect a lot on the counselor as well or it might not it's different uh, way of dealing and how you reappraise again how you appraise the whole situation so okay. i think how he appraised the situation might be different and he might have taken the blame upon himself in the webtoon but uh, you basically can or understand how things are maybe when you are taking therapy you will be able to understand it better okay anything you want to add riya ma'am and you want to add something to that hi anushka no absolutely fine from your end again uh, so this is how things work it may not work to the fullest so it depends on how uh, you know what kind of problem you all are facing but here i would like to point out if the therapist has uh, noticed certain difficulty areas which the therapist is unable to tackle with or there were certain red signals you know or red flags it is the duty first to share it with the near and dear ones that's very important because there will be certain trigger points certain uh, red flag areas where the counselor or the therapist needs to be very very particular about okay so uh, that will enable uh, less of these incidents happening we cannot say it will be a foolproof thing but of course we can try our best you know certain portions where we can raise our red flags and then communicate the same to our uh, the clients um, you know family immediate family or friends so it's important during the first few sessions you develop a kind of a bond um, or a rapport where you get the information also about their immediate family settings at least one person contact in case you come across uh, such incidents or you know the person has already expressed certain things about this particular thing okay ma'am thank you very much ma'am so and yeah. thank you so much anushka and ann it was lovely thank having you. you and thanks a lot for conducting the sessions i hope the audience thank also thanks a lot for coming in um i'm outside so i sorry i cannot switch on my videos but uh, thanks a ton and uh, as they have communicated that we will be having support group systems also we'll shortly communicate the same via mail so all the details will go in the mail do check your other folders as well because sometimes it happens the mail goes into the spam and people say that we haven't received it thank you ma'am thank you so thank much everyone thank you so much ma'am thank you so much ma'am <laughs>